smile. Once a four-year-old girl spotted Raleigh across the room. She wanted to pet him but was afraid to get close. Eventually, her curiosity overcame her sense of caution, and she spent several minutes talking to him and petting him. She discovered that he is a gentle creature, even though he's powerful. The combination of these qualities remind me of what we read about Jesus in the New Testament. <clears throat> Jesus was approachable. He welcomed the little children. You know, when we dedicate little children, that was Jesus. He's welcoming them. And he was kind to an adulterous woman in a desperate situation. Let him who hath no sin cast the first stone. Amen. We are our brother's keeper. <laughs> and we need to pray for each other and live. When we're going through a trial or a temptation or a tribulation, we need to pray for each other and lift each other up. Amen. Don't throw nobody away. They're worth praying for. Amen. Woo, feel the Holy Ghost, Brother Park. It's good to see you, man. God bless you for being here. Let me read this. The combination of these qualities remind me of what we read about Jesus in the New Testament. It's kind but powerful. Compassion, he was kind to an adulterous woman in a desperate situation. Compassion motivated him to teach crowds. At the same time, Jesus' power was astounding. Heads turned and jaws dropped. I've got all this underlined. Jesus' power was astounding. He subdued demons. He calmed violent storms. He resurrected dead people. That's the God that I serve. He's calm, but he's strong. Amen. He's right on time, and he knows just what you need and right when you need it. Amen. Hallelujah. He's God. Woo. Thank you, Holy Ghost. The way we see Jesus determines how we relate to him. If we focus only on his power, we might treat him with detached worship. We'd give him a comic book superhero syndrome. Yet if we overemphasize his kindness, we risk treating him too casually. The truth is that Jesus, got this underlined too. The truth is that Jesus is both at once great enough to deserve our obedience, yet humble enough to call us friends. He's my best friend. <laughs> He's the best friend I ever had. Amen. How about you? Is he your best friend? Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, next Tuesday, November the 8th, is Election Day. And I'm going to be speaking about that a little bit later on. But I encourage you to vote. Amen. It is your obligation. Amen. Amen. You need to vote. You need to let your voice be heard. Uh, and then next Friday, November the 11th, is Veterans Day. So I want to go ahead and let all of our veterans stand up. If you're a, you're a veteran, you served in military force in any capacity, I'll ask each one of you to stand up because we owe each one of you a debt of gratitude. We've got one up here, one over here, one over here. Jean, yeah, she's a Marine, hallelujah. <laughs> Give all these folks a hand, amen. Freedom didn't come free. Amen. Freedom didn't come free. Hallelujah. If you will, stand up with me. We'll go to the good Lord in prayer. Yes, ma'am, you sure can. Y'all, I know we're fixing to pray that today's our pastor's birthday. And I'm praying God for it. Y'all sit back down, man. <laughs> I'm 65 years old today. If I know that I'm going to live this long, I told them yesterday I'd have took better care of myself. Amen. Amen. I want everybody that get the birthday song ready, you can play it for me too. Amen. Everybody that had a birthday in November, if you will stand up. Am I the only one? All right, here I go. Torch out for birthday. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We got several. Amen. It's a good folk morning in November. Amen. 
Pass us on, brother. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. God bless all our people. All right, now let's stand up. Let's go to the good Lord. Let's go to the good Lord in prayer. Amen. Amen. Whatever's on your heart, give it to God this morning. Amen. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, I bow down before you humbly, God, in the name of Jesus Christ. I love you, Lord, with all my heart, all my mind, all my soul, God. I thank you, Lord, for dying on the cross for each one of us, and I thank you for loving us all enough to have compassion on us, to watch over us, to keep us safe, God, to put people around us that love us and that will pray for us. God, in the name of Jesus, I praise you, I honor you, I thank you for this day. Our church, our loving church, people that love each other, pray for each other, God. Bless this service this morning. Bless the preaching. Bless the teaching. Bless the singing, Lord. Bless our upcoming election, God. Bless everything that we do. We give it to you, God Almighty. We love you, praise you, honor you. We indeed invite the Holy Ghost into this house this morning. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Brother Ethan, come on. Say welcome back to everybody in the house of God. Good morning, thank God. Praise Amen. You are in the worship zone here. We are honored to have each and every one of you. If you'll look in front of you in the queue if you're a visitor, there's a visitor or a connect card. We'd like you to fill that out. Please drop it into the offering container. Or I should come around in a few minutes to receive the offering. We would love to hear from you and just to connect with you. Amen. And the announcements this morning, we have both children's church and nursery available. I want to say a special thank you to Sister Pam Mathis, Sister Marie Case, and uh, Sister Wendy for all the hard work that they do. Uh, there will be no choir practice this evening, but I want to encourage each and every one of you to come back tonight at 6 p.m. Brother Daniel MacArthur is going to be bringing the word. I know he's, I know his brother personally. He stays studied up, and he's very committed and very faithful to the work of the Lord. So you want to come back and hear him tonight. Amen. Let's give him a hand clap of appreciation. Amen. Amen. Come back tonight at 6 p.m. and come expecting a blessing. Amen. Tuesday, November 8th is the next Overcomers Outreach weekly meeting. If you have any hurts, habits, or hang-ups in your own life, or you know somebody that has, Tuesday night is a specific time set aside that they can pray with you, that they can talk with you. And whatever you say, here, stay here. Amen. 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 Wednesday night, November 9th, is the War Room meeting for both the men and women of Valor Prayer Groups um, every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. We have Bible study and a real intimate time of prayer. So if you want to get into the war room with us, everybody's welcome. And we encourage you to come out on Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Food pantry, we're currently in need of all items for Thanksgiving uh, dinner. Uh, the next upcoming two weeks, we want to be ready. And we hope to be able to help at least 40 families. So we're in need of items of instant potatoes, stuffing mix, canned vegetables, gravy mix, cranberry sauce, chicken broth, etc. Anything else that you believe that would go into a Thanksgiving meal. We thank you for in advance for your obedience and your giving. Uh, City View Church's main webpage, if you want to keep up with what's going on the latest in your home church, you can check us out on the main webpage at cvuchurch.weebly.com, or you can look us up on Facebook at CVU Church of God. We're also on Twitter as under CVU Church, under CVU underscore COG. And uh, you can also look us up on YouTube. We post all of our Sunday morning uh, services on YouTube, and it goes around the world. We hope that you'll share those if you see them on Facebook or Twitter and help us to take the gospel message around the four corners of the earth. Sister Susan. Yeah, I just want to tell the whole church, I told them Wednesday night if you want to help this deal about the Thanksgiving dinner, the food scene has got their uh, Martha White, White Lily and all that cornmeal and stuff, dirt cheap, and their gravy in the jar, 99 cents, duck and hind, cake mix, 69 cents a bottle. I mean, you can fill two boxes of them, you know, 20 bucks each. Yeah. Help, help y'all to see more than 40 people. So if you want to be able to help in your giving, the food city's got some sales going on that will greatly help us. And we thank you in advance for all your generosity and your giving. At this time, I'll ask everybody to stand this morning and receive the tithes and offerings for this beautiful Sunday morning. A little smoky outside, but the house of God's clear. Did you come here to worship Him this morning? Amen. 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 We serve the living God. Brother Ken, I'll get you said blessing over this morning's offering. Anything else that God lays in your heart?
gives me great pleasure to present to you the City View Church of God Angelic Singing Choir and Praise. And give a great big hand. Amen. <laughs>
pray for different people <clears throat> this morning. And I thought, God is God. Amen. Oh, he's God and he's all human. That's what this old song says, God is God. And I'm going to try to sing it for you. You remember that, Zach? All y'all know it, you sang it with me, amen? church this morning. Amen. It's good to see you, Sister Mildred. I love you. Sweet aunt, former pastor's wife. Amen. 
We love her. Appreciate her being here, her family. Amen. My family. Amen. Woo. Come to feel the Holy Ghost this morning. Amen. Come to stop with him.
Oh, you sure would. 
praise and honor for the spirit that already failed. Amen. Sermon title this morning is It's Your Choice. I can have a, a whole lot of different meanings. Amen. It is your choice. Amen. Amen. Your first choice needs to be Jesus Christ. Ultimately. That is your first choice. Amen. I want to bow down on my knees and I'm going to lead y'all in a little sinner's prayer. I ask y'all to repeat after me. When you repent of your sins and you ask forgiveness, you've done all you can do. You've done all you can do. And your past is forgotten. Amen. It's in the sea of forgetfulness. Amen. 
That's what my God says. Amen. Y'all repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I love you, Lord, with all my heart. I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. Every sin I've ever committed in my life. It's under the blood. I said it's under the blood. Woo, under the blood of Jesus. I am forgiven forever. I am a child of the King. I am bought by the blood of the Lamb. I am yours. Give God praise. Amen. Woo. If you will, open your Bibles to 2 Peter chapter 1. We chose Jesus first. But now, it's time for us to elect a new president. And it's our duty and our responsibility to vote. We need to vote. You need to let your voice be heard. The end... The evangelical vote is tremendous. It is a big part of the vote. Be a part of it. Amen. Text verse, 2 Peter 1 and 10. It says, Wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fail. Amen. Folks in America need to choose like you did this morning. Right. Like you did a long time ago. 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago, you chose Jesus Christ. One time in your life, you bowed down and you asked for forgiveness and you cried your heart out and he come into you and you ain't never been the same since. Amen? amen. Am I telling the truth, Red? Give me an amen. Come on. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. My God is real. He's real. Make your calling and election sure. Amen. But it works with me, Tim Johnson. He sent me an email. I said he sent me an email. All emails ain't bad. Amen. I ain't trying to sway y'all or nothing, but I'm telling you that all emails ain't bad. But listen to this. Listen to this right here. Beloved God in heaven, this is a prayer. So we want to vote next Tuesday, November the 8th, for our new president. This is a, this is a prayer for him. Beloved God in heaven, please give us a president that loves this country and everything that this country stands for. Amen. Amen. Please give us a president who respects you as the one true God. Amen. Amen. Think about your candidates. Think about who you're voting for. Please give us a president who will, with your help, restore this nation to its former glory. Amen. The way you created her. Amen. Religious liberty, religious freedom. Amen. Please give us a president that will not try to destroy our churches. Amen. Please help us to respect what you have given to us and not take anything for granted ever again. Please, God, weaken the evil and strengthen the good. Amen both within and without. May our eyes be opened in the name of Jesus as never before in the history of this country has this plea been so necessary. In God we trust and we pray that God will bless America one more time. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. God bless America again. I'm not supposed to endorse a candidate or tell you who I'm voting for or tell you who to vote for. But I wanted to read those emails to you. And I got another email. 
This one came from Sister Jean. This is a Jean email. She sent this email to Sister Brenda. Sister Brenda got it. She gave it to me and I read it and I loved it. I thought it was real good for today's day. She got Brother Zach to show her how to email it to herself on her printer so she could print it for me. See how that works? God put things together for you. Amen. I got an army working for me and for God. God's got an army working for him. Amen. Hallelujah. (laughs) Woo. God can make mighty men change their mind, walk away scratching their head wondering why they done it. Amen. God raises kings and he sets them down. Amen. That's the God that I serve. Amen. Hallelujah. Woo. Praise his holy name. Go with me to Proverbs 16, 6, 16 and 17. Chapter 6, verse 16 and 17. Talking about the election. Talking about letting your voice be heard. It's very important. We're fighting for our religious freedom and our way of life. Amen. Amen. Proverbs 6, I want to read 16 and 17. Who will I vote for? I will vote for the most pro-life candidate. I don't know if you've been watching the news and watching the the debates and all the different things, but you can tell who is most pro-life. I will vote for the most pro-life candidate. Because God hates the shedding of innocent blood. Amen. Proverbs 6 and 17. 6, 16 and 17. 16 says, These six things that the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him, a proud look, a lying tongue. Let me say that one more time. Amen. A lying tongue. Yeah. Amen. And hands that shed innocent blood. Amen. That's what we're talking about this morning. Who you're going to pick. Who you're going to choose. Amen. Go with me to Genesis 12 and 3. Genesis 12 and 3. Oh, my old Bible's in bad shape. I've glued it back together so many times. Maybe I can read this. Amen. I will vote for the most pro-Israel candidate. Because God blesses those who bless Israel. We are the adopted children of God. Amen. We are God's people. Israel is God's land. Amen. God blesses those who bless Israel and curses those who don't. I bless Israel. I bless God's people. I bless you in the name of Jesus. Somebody say I receive it. I receive it in the name of Jesus. I am blessed and highly favored by God Almighty. Amen. Genesis 12 and 3. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curseth thee and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. In thee, in God we trust. In God we trust. Amen. So I'm 65 years old. I've got some wisdom. I've got a bunch of gray hair. Amen. God has protected me, watched over me. He has helped me through times of despair and trouble and brokenheartedness, sickness, broken bones, all kind of things. My God has been there for me. If He'll do it for me, He'll do it for you. Amen. Every single one of you. Amen. Hallelujah. When I've needed deliverance, (laughs) he delivered me. When I was the baddest of the bad, I was like Muhammad Ali. I was the baddest man alive. Harold, I was a sinner. I was a 100% sinner. I was a good sinner. Amen for such a thing. But when I turned my heart to God, whoo, what a turnaround. 
as far as the east is from the west. Amen. God can turn you around. He can change your heart, change your mind in a second. Yeah, he's worthy. He's worthy. Go with me back to Proverbs. I'm running y'all. We're shotgunning this morning, amen? Got the double barrel out this morning, amen? Go with me to Proverbs 22 and verse 7. We were close to that a while ago, I think. I'm going to go ahead and read 6 because that's one of my most favorite verses in the whole wide world when we get there. But let me see right here. Proverbs 22 and 7. I will vote for the most pro-debt reduction candidate. We in a heap of debt, y'all. This country is in bad debt. Amen. Our church is debt free. (laughs) God's house is debt free. Amen. I give God praise and honor for that. Amen. We ain't like the world. We ain't up to our eyeballs in debt. Amen. We need a president that will be frugal and will cut cost. Amen. Cut big spending. Cut government. That's what he needs to do. Or she. Amen. I ain't swaying you. (laughs) We need somebody with some experience that knows how to do that. Amen. I will vote for the most pro-debt reduction candidate because the borrower is a servant to the lender. Amen. We are a servant to a lot of other countries. We owe them a lot of money. China. Japan. I don't know who all. We owe a lot, a lot. We need a... And you know, I try to think in my mind, all of us working folk, I'm a working man just like y'all. Every week, oh, Uncle Sam, he gets that chunk out of my check. Out of your check. And I don't know, is it 300 million people in America? A ton of people. All working every week, giving that chunk of change. Honey, when you add all that up every week... You can't think how much money that is. That's an enormous amount each week that they get. They need to handle it better. They need to be good stewards of God's money. Because it's God's money when it comes from y'all. Amen. Hallelujah. Proverbs 22, 6 and 7. 6 is just, it's just one of my favorites. It says, train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Amen. Amen. (laughs) My mama trained me up that way. And I went to church. I was drugged to church. I mean, I was. She drugged me. I didn't want to go until I was 17 years old. And I quit going. And I didn't go to church for 20 years. Except maybe on Christmas or Easter. But at the end of that 20 years, my life was so messed up that I couldn't handle it. And I went to a little old church down here on Ezra Avenue, South 41, City View Church of God. And I run to the altar. And I give my heart to God. And the night old Curtis Belcher baptized me, I got at the bottom of them steps because I was scared to get in the water. I asked God to forgive me again, take everything that was wrong out of me to bless me in his name and let me do something for him because what he's done for me, I'll never repay it. Amen. But verse 7, the rich ruleth over the poor and the the borrower is the servant to the lender. That's what I'm talking about. That's what America has become. We're servant to our debt. It is so, it's so humongous. We need change. We need change for the better. We need a godly man, amen, a godly person to run this country. Amen. So we need to vote, amen. 2 Thessalonians 3 and 10, other end of the Bible, amen. Amen.
2 Thessalonians 3 and 10. I will vote for the most pro-work candidate, the one that will get jobs going again. Amen. I will vote for the most pro-work candidate because God says, if a man not work, let him not eat. There's another place, and I can't remember where it's at, but it's in my head. It says, if a man won't work, he's worse than an infidel. I've had to work hard all my life, so I believe in hard work. If you're doing something for God, don't be deterred. If you're doing something for God, don't be deterred. Look for it, expect it. Because the enemy is going to attack. The more you do for God, the more he's going to attack you. When the Hebrew children were thrown in the fiery furnace, they had faith that was seven times hotter than the seven times hot that they made the furnace. They come out of the furnace, they didn't even smell like smoke, y'all. That's a God that I serve. So when he attacks you, tell him who is king of kings, lord of lords, my Jesus, my Lord, my Savior. He protects me. He watches over me. He keeps me. Whoa! Glory. Hallelujah to his name. Praise his holy name. Woo! Did I read that verse? <laughs> I didn't read it yet. Second, Second Thessalonians 3 and 10. It says, I will vote for the most pro-work candidate because God says if man not work, let him not eat. It says, For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. Get up off of your bohunkus and go get a, <laughs> go get a job. Amen. My Uncle Kenneth... <laughs> Mildred, you probably heard him say this. My Uncle Kenneth used to say, if you can't find a job in Dalton, Georgia, you don't want a job. Amen. 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 I mean, these people are working in this town, I guarantee you. Amen. But we need to have a president that is pro-jobs. He wants to create jobs. He wants to get people back to work. Woo. Go with me to Genesis, front of the book. Going the other way now, 2 and 24. Page 4 in my Bible. Genesis 2. actually page 3 Genesis 2 and 24 I will vote for the most listen to this this is very important I will vote for the most pro-marriage candidate I'm talking about the way God looks at marriage one man one woman that's it I will vote for the most pro-marriage candidate Because God is for marriage as defined in Genesis 2 and 24. Here we go. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. Amen. Amen. Consummated. One flesh. There's actually three of you. You marry your spouse, but Jesus Christ is right in the middle of that. So that makes three. Amen. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. That's like the Trinity. He's with you all the time. Amen. Even in your marriage, He's with you. Always. If He ain't with you, you ain't got no marriage. Amen. Go with me. (laughs) Other end of the Bible. Romans 13 and 3. I'm running y'all around. Amen. Amen. I love this country. I wouldn't want to live nowhere else. 
God has blessed this country beyond compare. To any other country, any other civilization in the whole wide world, the United States is the greatest, the most powerful, the most prosperous. God has done a work here. We need some people in government that respect God Almighty because He's the one that did it. Amen? Praise His holy name. I'll vote for the candidate who most closely believes government's purpose is to reward the good and punish the evil. Amen? Romans, probably just read this whole chapter, but we'll go to Romans 13 and verse 3. Romans 13 and 3 says, For rulers are not a terror to good workers, but to the evil. What the Bible says, amen? Rulers are not a terror to good workers, but to evil. Will thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. Amen? The government needs to do that which is good for the people of the United States. Amen? Amen. 2 Timothy 3 and 16. You know, I watched all the debates and I've watched the news a lot uh, in the evening. I try to stay abreast and know what's going on in the world. These two candidates, they talk about their unfavorable. <laughs> unfavorableness I guess <laughs> that they both have high unfavorables people don't really like either one of them right. they're choosing the lesser of two evils in essence but I'm praying I'm asking God you know whatever happened God's in control right. whatever happens he's in control he sets kings up and he puts them down. Amen. Second Timothy 3, 16. I will vote based as close as I can on God's word. Second Timothy 3 and 16. Now the Lord of peace himself give you peace. I'm asking for God to do that for our country. This election, there's a whole lot. It's like 50% for this, 50% for that. There's a lot of tension and a lot of strife. I'm asking the God in heaven to give our country peace Amen. and to heal. Whatever the cause on this election is and whatever the case I'm asking him now the Lord of peace himself give you peace always by all means the Lord be with you all I'm praying for that I'm praying for that amen go with me to Daniel 2 and 21 I'm almost done y'all Daniel 2 and 21 Daniel 2 and 21, knowing that whoever gets elected, God is the one who puts all men in authority. God is the one. Verse 21 says, and he changeth the times and the seasons. That's what God does. That's what God can do. You know, we went fishing yesterday. I took the first lady fishing. From, <laughs> and a bunch of my family, we all went that Rocky Mountain, that, that uh, it's a big bass lake. It's a, a trophy lake. <laughs> I caught one little bluegill about that long. <laughs> it was nearly as big as a cricket, amen? <clears throat> but I told Miss Brenda when she got on board, I said, you got to call me captain. She said, hi, hi, sir. <laughs> Let me hear it, honey. <laughs> Holler out, captain. 
believe we got a mutiny. <laughs> mutiny on board. <laughs> Hallelujah. She actually caught more fish than I did this time. Amen. So I guess she's the captain now. Amen. <laughs> Until the next time. Amen. <laughs> Daniel 2 and 21. You know, I read part of that. And he changes the times and the seasons. He re- this is what I was talking about. He sets up kings and he sets them down. And he changes the times and the seasons. That's how powerful God is. Think he can't do this. Think he can't do this. He, re- he removeth kings and he setteth up kings. That's my God. Amen. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. He giveth when you pray, if you're going for a job interview, what you ask God to make you more intelligent than you are. Raise your IQ. He did that for me, amen? I'm a manager, amen? I ain't bragging about me. I'm bragging about God, amen? I'm bragging what God can do, amen? He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding, Amen? Hallelujah. May God have mercy on America. I will vote. Somebody say, I will vote. I will vote. vote. Amen. I will vote. I will let my voice be heard. The Bible says, let your yeas be yea and your nays be nay. Make up your mind and stand behind it and vote your heart, vote your mind, vote your conscience. Vote who is closest to God. Who you think is closest to God. That's the best advice I can give you. Amen. Uh, I think Sister Elaine Taylor's got the altar. Come on up, sis. I'm about through. Um, I want to read just a little bit. I've got three more pages, but this is a little bit of what uh, Franklin Graham wrote. And I'll just read this while she's coming. We know from Scripture that God can turn the hearts of kings. I just read that to you. That that means that we should be praying for God's will to be done and for our leaders to seek God and listen to Him. We should pray that they would be surrounded by godly counsel and most important, that our leadership would personally know God and the salvation found through faith in Jesus Christ alone. Think about all the issues before our president and the leaders of our nation at this moment. Just ask God to help them. Ask God to bless them. Ask God to help you to make the right decision. Amen. It is your choice. It is your choice. Choose wisely. Go vote. Amen. Give God a hand clap of praise. Stand up with me. Amen. We've had a wonderful prayer service, but if there's anybody here that don't know Jesus Christ, we invite you to come to the altar. Make Him your Lord and your Savior. Your life will be so different. I promise. So different. Yes, ma'am. that in my lap via all these emails and whatnot, and I wanted to share that with you because I thought it was very important. Yes, sir. I would also like to recommend to the church that upon uh, making your decision, Amen. take a good look at the Bible. Yes, ma'am. 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 Yes, 
vice presidents is older than dirt. They're both older than me. Amen? <laughs> the candidates, anyway. Oh, Lord. If you need prayer, I know I do. Amen? <laughs> the altars are always open. Amen? I love all of you. I appreciate you being here. God bless you is my prayer. She's going to sing. If you need to pray, altars are open. Sing it, sis, whatever's on your heart.
what's about to happen. You pray for our grandbabies. You know, I have little Lakeland, the one that was early. She's beautiful. Of course, I would say that. <laughs> she weighs about seven, a little over seven pounds now. And she's almost five months old. But she weighs now what a newborn would normally weigh. But she's thriving. They've checked her eyes. Her eyes are fine. Her little brain, she has no, her brain has developed everything. You've got to have one. And that is a Most of the time, they're not even developed, you know, by that time. But I told John, I said, John, she's a miracle. Baby. She's a miracle baby. And I call her my little miracle. Baby. And now she, she is alert. She, you can talk to her. She's grinning at you. But just pray, people, because it, it's going to affect our kids and our grandbabies. Sister Elaine Taylor needs to do a good job. Amen. I got a song in my heart. I read it this morning. Amen. Amen. It's going to be this missile song, a little chorus. And it's our pledge of allegiance to the Lamb. Amen. I did that a long time ago. I'm asking you to pledge allegiance to the Lamb and vote your heart. Amen. Y'all know this little chorus, sing it with me. I might do it twice. I pledge allegiance to with all my strength, with all I am, I will seek to honor His commands. I pledge allegiance to the Lamb. One more time. I pledge allegiance to the Lamb. With all my God bless you. Amen. Shake hands, somebody, hug somebody's neck, come back tonight, Brother Daniel's going to be preaching. Amen.